Okay, this morning we are at the place where four states meet in one spot, and that is Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Belong the monument monument belongs to Navajo Nation. All right, so Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico. Bigger circle and so here's the New Mexico side. Here's the Colorado side. Mitch, I wanna be Colorado Coloradian. Uh, Utah side and Arizona side. We are in the Mesa Verde National Park. And of course, Mesa Verde has the ruins of the Pueblo people that used to populate this area. According to the archeologists 800 years ago. Well, a lot of breath we've been hiking, but unfortunately, well, like Mitch said, the beautiful part visiting it this time of the year, there's no crowds. The drawback, most of the trails are closed because they are afraid that we're gonna slip and fall. So you can't really get any closer to it than from here. Still pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. There is a nice museum that we just visited where some of the whatever research was able to determine how they lived, how they build, what they used for food and all that. The rest is, is pretty interesting. Neat place to visit without a doubt. Well, that's one of the sites. This one is way on the top. Probably had a Letters, letters somewhere, maybe in the inside shaft to get up on the top level. Well, from the documentary we saw, um, at a later point they moved into this area, and um, I guess the cliff dwellers name comes from that because it's pretty much their housing is right up there on the, in the sandstone and yeah, let's see let's zoom in very interesting Considering they were utilizing mostly primitive tools, um, pretty impressive to me. The sophistication of what they're living. I wonder if there's a better lookout. I don't know, unfortunately everything is closed. Well, I know, the second road leads right down to the base of it. Mm -hmm. It was closed during winter. Their dwellings spread out throughout the canyon, separated by sometimes miles apart, just small communities of, I, I don't know, 50, maybe to the most 100 people. So throughout this canyon, this uh, little sites, little, little villages are spread. Well, we're going through Colorado, not sure what mountain range it is. It's really nice out here, we're over 10,000 feet. And we're not to the top of the pass just yet. Alright, doing a little maintenance work, changing oil filter after how many miles has it been? Like 5,500? Five and a half thousand. 
Yeah, so we're, we changed the filter and decided to rotate the tires because of the capping from the mud that we procured on that road. And it's just trying to scrape it all out. Yeah, I mean, the, the capping, this tire is not too bad. This one is a little worse. But definitely, uh, at speed, over 55 miles an hour, we started feeling the vibration and looking into it, gonna clean it. And uh, we respond to all the comments, so to prevent some of the comments, yes, we heard of uh, pressure washer and stuff, but this is actually a lot more efficient and faster. And um, more Cheaper. importantly, to to get this stuff out with the pressure washer, it would take probably half an hour for it to just to soak in to be able to spray it off. So this is actually, in my mind anyway, it's a lot more efficient. Efficient. 50, uh, 5,500 miles on um, on the truck. Again. Um, all the people who know different, yes, uh, maybe we should change the oil completely, but especially with the hard miles. But over the years, I always uh, changed, regardless of miles, I changed the oil twice, twice a year, before the winter and after the winter, considering winters in Wyoming are pretty harsh. Uh, it's not uncommon to see zero degrees and below zero um, significant portion of, of the winter. So I don't really go by the miles, I go, in this case, yeah, probably changing uh, the oil completely might be a little bit safer, but we're running full synthetic and uh, I know that debate goes back and forth for years now and everybody got their own philosophy of what's the right thing to do so it works for me and as they say if it's if it's not broken don't fix it if I will uh, find that my engine will uh, uh, get fried on the way in the next 5,000 miles before we do the full change we're planning to do it in Maryland with my good friends Val Val's he has facilities to to do it then I guess I will stand corrected and I should have done it differently but anyway without going too much into it it works for us and that's what we do um so three weeks on the road today is saturday so it's been it's today exactly three weeks 5500 miles um besides the melted tail light uh cracked lens on our off-road lights uh exhaust leak was is there any other damage in the pocketbook <laughs> repaired the hose on the airbag and repair right and well that one was fairly simple and uh actually what mitch found is uh, there's a little plate that is positioned right under the airbag and the hole on the plate is not centered so every time we were flexing off-road when the airbag was coming down the plate will get shifted and kind of pinch the hose and I think that's uh, well we are both think that's uh, that's what we're causing the leak especially it had a little clip um, over the nipple of the airbag where the hose uh, goes over it and I th we, we think that the plate was catching that that clip and makes things worse so this time around Mitch didn't even put the clip just slided the hose over the nipple and it's been holding up the pressure not losing anything at all so it seems to be fixed that problem otherwise um, in all the camping off-roading and everything else uh, we did not find any uh, lack of any equipment that's, uh, uh, that we brought with us. Everything was, was just right. 
some of the things may be overkill we end up leaving our toilet seat behind didn't find the use for it and uh, the shower we have a camp shower with us never used that one uh, everything else got used and uh, it was pretty pretty good well there's one more lost Mitch on the way you forgot that shovel at the gas station <laughs> for a snow shovel yeah anyway so that's update uh, on our third uh, end of the or beginning of the fourth week we'll see you on the road or from the road